Hello, this is Jyotir Moishil. We shall discuss on reading scale. These are the topics we shall be discussing. Let's start with definition of reading. Reading is a cognitive process of decoding symbols to derive meaning. So it's a very cognitive process through which you can be able to decode some uh, some symbols or language or some written lines and you will be able to derive meaning it's a form of language processing a means for language acquisition communication and sharing information and ideas reading is also a method of learning a language is the very first step of learning a language suppose i am trying to learn a Sp uh, the spanish language then uh, the first step would be to uh, learn how to pronounce the spanish words or uh, spanish letters so the first one of the first steps of learning a language is reading so reading is also the very uh, basic of language processing success in the process is measured by reading comprehension so reading comprehension means reading with comprehension reading does not only mean that i can read something i know a language i know how to read and then i just read out whatever is written or printed it is not the actual definition of reading reading means reading with comprehension i can read the language or the written lines that is the first necessary step of reading and the second step is or the second uh, criteria is reading with comprehension that whatever i am reading i shall be able to comprehend it that will be uh, the effective reading stolfer uh, said reading is a complicated procedure readers read to get information from the printed pages they should be able to pronounce and comprehend the printed words that is the very crucial point that whatever you are reading it's not just reading out uh, the written lines or printed lines it is also that you need to comprehend the meaning uh, so comprehend the printed words signs letters and symbols by assigning meaning to them jenkinson also uh, said a similar uh, uh, definition of reading reading has been defined as an act of responding to printed symbols so that meaning is created it has long since been recognized however that getting meaning from a printed page is too limited uh, as a definition of reading bringing meaning to the printed page indicates more accurately the reciprocal process between the printed symbols and the mind of the reader so according to jenkinson reading is a very reciprocal process where the negotiation between the printed page or the printed lines or the written lines and the mind of the reader would occur the uh, printed lines or the written lines would be able to um, explore some meaning to the reader and the reader would also try to apprehend the written lines or the printed lines so it's a very reciprocal process reading as a visual process first of all i need to clarify why i'm calling reading as a skill simply because you need to learn this you need to learn how to read so that's why it's a skill it's not that you uh, you uh, just uh, it's a it's a very inborn talent reading is not a very inborn talent you need to learn how to read i am giving you an example suppose i need to learn spanish i don't know spanish if someone gives me a page where uh, something is written in spanish i won't be able to apprehend this i won't be able to read it even 
because I don't know how to read Spanish. So I need to uh, acquire that skill, that skill of uh, reading Spanish. Then I need to learn Spanish and only then I shall be able to read and comprehend the uh, Spanish lines. So that's why reading is a skill because you need to learn this. Reading as a visual process. I am giving you an example. Suppose you are reading a storybook. It's very unlikely that you shall be reading it loudly. No. So you can read loudly. You can read to yourself. And you can read out uh, something to others. But you can also read something silently. So it's a very visual process. You see the symbols. Language is a series of symbols, series of organized symbols. So you see the symbols and you know the meaning of the symbols and then you shall be able to read it. So you see, it's reading starts with seeing. Now I shall mention uh, in case of uh, uh, visually impaired uh, people they have a very different way of reading that is braille they uh, braille script i think you know of this that um, they would touch uh, they would touch the um, you can you can say that uh, they would touch the uh, braille script hmm? uh, then you they can be able to read the meaning of uh, of, of some uh, of some script so they the visually impaired uh, uh, people they read by touching the braille script okay so let's move on to the next topic that is bottom up process of reading this emphasizes the written or printed text reading is driven by the process that results in meaning and process from part to whole bottom up processes happens when someone tries to understand language by looking at individual meanings or grammatical characteristics of most basic units of the text and moves from these to trying to understand the whole text uh, so in this process the reader would try to uh, apprehend a text by reading its uh, lines and words without any uh, predetermined uh, expectations of what you would find from this text. This happens when we uh, learn reading in our childhood. That is uh, when we teach a child how to read. Uh, the the child usually would uh, uh, take this bottom up process of reading because uh, this child any child would try to who is learning in the uh, very initial stage of learning reading he or she would uh, be reading every single word would try to apprehend the meaning of every single word then they would try to apprehend the meaning of uh, single lines and through this gradually they would uh, grasp the meaning of the text the meaning of the entire text now what is top down process of reading that is uh, something happens when uh, we we already know how to read uh, at a very advanced stage i am giving you an example suppose you were reading a geography book and you are uh, reading uh, something, you are about to read a chapter on uh, Malabar Mountains. Okay, Malabar Mountains of South India. So, Malabar Hills of South India. Then, uh, before you start reading, you would have a basic idea of what you are going to read. You would expect something that you can find these topics, these uh, points in this chapter. Now when we start reading uh, with a shot of 
prior knowledge or expectations this is called top down process of reading this is what we uh, usually do when i am reading suppose a chapter on trigonometry then i shall uh, also have a sort of prior knowledge that what i am going to read what i am going to find in that particular chapter and i have some expectations of what i am going to read so this is called top down process of reading whereas in bottom up process of reading uh, there there is no prior knowledge is involved there is no uh, expectation is involved the reader simply reads uh, words to word line to lines and then uh, try to apprehend the meaning of the entire text but in top down process of reading that we usually do is uh, that uh, we usually have a, a prior knowledge and expectations of what we are going to read reading and reading skill that is what i have already discussed reading means decoding the meanings from the written or printed symbols or language now why reading is a skill because it needs to be learned you need to learn how to read that's why it's a skill this skill varies from person to person according to linguistic competence and background knowledge obviously because uh, suppose uh, uh, suppose uh, we are reading a third uh, suppose we are reading a new language suppose italian language hmm? then uh, our reading pro we don't know italian language so how we would read the italian script that would depend on our linguistic competence and background knowledge of that particular language that particular language effective reading i have already mentioned this reading is not just reading out whatever you just uh, see reading means reading with comprehension you need to apprehend the meaning uh, of whatever you read so this is judged by one's efficiency of reading which depends upon his or her linguistic competence background knowledge about the subject and words used in the text so effective reading is something that we can call uh, this situation effective effective reading when the reader would have a prior knowledge of that text what he or she is going to read then would have an appropriate background and sound knowledge of the language in which the text is written uh, what we can say linguistic competence and background knowledge the knowledge that he or she already uh, uh, already has on the topic that he or she is going to read qualities of an effective reader so first of all an effective reader has a purpose of reading so has a purpose of reading otherwise you should be reading very casually if you have a purpose of reading then the reading would be much more effective i am giving you a very simple example think of the night before uh, of your examination you shall be reading with uh, the intensity with, with 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 a sort of intensity that you will read in your entire life hmm? it is it cannot be compared to the reading process of your entire life uh, suppose uh, you are going to give uh, the exam uh, an exam of uh, mathematics then the night think of the night before of that examination okay your intensity of reading is something uh, that is very uh, commendable every one of us uh, this happens to every one of us so when you have a purpose your reading would be much more effective hmm? when you want to uh, suppose you love rabindranath tagore's poems then you are reading for your own pleasure then it can also be an effective reading because you have purpose somehow you have purpose then it would be the reading would be effective an effective reader can concentrate on whatever he is reading or he or she is reading otherwise it would not be comprehensive reading and comprehend what he reads what you read you shall be able to comprehend this and remembers what he reads and this is very crucial 
it's not that I'm just reading out and comprehend the meaning then forgetting it effective reading is something that when we read something and when we try to remember this has a good vocabulary this is also important otherwise uh, suppose you are reading an English script and then you don't know suppose 10% of its uh, meanings uh, of, of, of the dictions that uh, that have been used in that script so it would not be an effective reading because you cannot apprehend uh, either you cannot apprehend the meanings of that particular words you need to surmise those or you need to look into the dictionary so you need to have a good vocabulary in order to become an effective reader an effective reader also can read rapidly but with rate depending on the material it's not that you always uh, read on with dead speed the speed of the reading would depend on the necessity uh, depend on the uh, on the nature of the text how much complexities suppose you are reading with dead speed but you cannot apprehend it then it's useless suppose you are reading i'm giving an example since you are literature student suppose you are reading can the subaltern speak uh, by gayatri chakraborty spivak if you try to read this with dead speed then i don't think you can be able to apprehend uh, any single line uh, when i first read can the subaltern speak it took half an hour to complete the very introduction introduction is brief but the uh, but 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 the ideas are ideas encoded in that particular essay is very complex so it demanded a very slow reading and i should also say that i couldn't i, I still couldn't apprehend the introduction of uh, uh, can the sovereign speak because of the nature of the text is very complex types of reading ya kem defined or specified these types of reading oral and silent reading okay you can read out to others or you can read uh, silently informal reading reading to provide information or to get information is just when you looking into a text for uh, to to get some uh, information recreational reading reading for entertainment and time pass hmm? reading for entertainment and time pass suppose you are reading a story or a novel or suppose uh, you you like harry potter series so you are reading uh, deathly hallows part 1 so it's it's something that is recreational reading is something that is uh, for entertainment and time pass observational reading no specific efforts to analyze it or to remember the words or ideas but you just want to uh, see what are the ideas put into that text hmm? just you don't need to remember this uh, this usually happens uh, suppose you are trying to find an answer of uh, the absurdity uh, the the qualities of absurdity in uh, franz kafka's trial suppose you need to find out uh, the notes of uh, this particular question then what you shall do uh, you are browsing on internet and you are just uh, you are just browsing through several pages you are looking into several pages and in order to find the appropriate material for your answer so when you are browsing through several other materials you are just looking into it uh, looking into those materials very casually this should be called an example of observational uh, observational reading because you are just uh, you you are just trying to find out something and that's why you are just observing whatever is written on the, those particular text until you find the appropriate one assimilative to understand fully and remember what one reads Hmm, this is ex this is usually happens in case of uh, in in case uh, when we are going to attend an examination or we are going to teach a topic that you need to remember this otherwise you would be in uh, you would be uh, facing problems reflective reading with a critical attitude okay suppose you are reading uh, devdut patnaik's uh, myth and mitha this book and you're reading with a very critical attitude that whether the whether the stories whether the anecdotes written on this particular book are actually authentic or not 
or suppose you are going to write a review of the any text okay so when you are reading with a critical attitude when you are trying to uh, form your own ideas own opinion uh, based on a text this can be called reflective reading so reading with a critical attitude okay types of reading then again creative readings creative reading is something that when the reader tries to discover ideas so that he can use them subsequently in, in oral written or written expression hmm? creative readings is something this is usually done by the poets and the creative writers hmm, novelists they would be reading other several books in order to find out the ways language can be uh, utilized to create uh, a poem or a or novel or something like that so creative reading is something when you're reading something in order to imbibe the creative capability okay uh, um, okay Sunil Gangopadhyay once said that um, if you want to be a writer you need to be a voracious reader without extensive reading you can never be a good writer because through reading in the process of reading several other uh, texts you can find your own language so creative reading is something when you're reading in order to uh, get some new ideas and use them accordingly in your own works scheming okay uh, let me tell you that creative reading is never a plagiarism uh, skimming skimming involves quickly running one's eyes over a text to get the gist of it so suppose you are reading a newspaper okay uh, you are okay I'm giving you an example that um, suppose uh, you are planning to go to a cinema hall to see a movie now you are trying to find out what movie would be appropriate okay then you was what you are doing you are going through several reviews film reviews and just looking into it in a very observational manner to get the gist of it okay so whether it would be worthy or not so uh, so what I exemplify this is actually observational method but skimming is something that uh, when you read something very rapidly in order to get the gist of it what is the basic uh, basic uh, fact uh, in this text what is the basic uh, major idea that is being encoded in this text so that is skimming you are just reading very fast to get the gist of it scanning scanning involves quickly going through a text to find a particular piece of information okay so when you're trying to find out um, a particular piece of information from a text so what would you do you just you would just go through the lines very rapidly you would look at it in a very casual way to find out the exact uh, exact line where, uh, where which include which includes your uh, necessary information uh, suppose uh, you have read a text suppose you have read uh, a history book and uh, you have forgotten particular one point that uh, you have forgotten that how much wives did Sajahan uh, have did, did Sajahan have so you have read somewhere in the text that you have read that uh, 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 that that Sajahan had uh, had uh, uh, more than one wives but you have forgotten the exact number but you know that this is somewhere in this text so you were looking into it very quickly in order to find out the exact line where your information is uh, is encoded so this is scanning intensive reading involves reading shorter text to extract specific information this kind of reading is otherwise known as reading for details so intensive reading involves reading shorter text to extract specific information okay so intensive reading uh, there is a bit different from intensive reading and skinning uh, and skimming okay skimming means uh, a very quick uh, uh, a, a very uh, swift reading uh, through which you need to find out the gist of it the very summary of that particular text but intensive reading is something that is 
necessary to get information to specific information to extract specific information that suppose you are analyzing a data suppose you are analyzing a data on um, covid 19 patients in west bengal then uh, suppose you have a reason suppose you are writing a research paper then you need to read those data intensively even though you are not using it for your own uh, work but this demands an intensive reading a very slight mistake on your part would spoil your own research paper okay so you are reading those data to get the exact information okay so that is called intensive reading so five stages of learning reading the learner learns to read the alphabetic orders a b c up to x y z suppose you are reading suppose you are teaching a child uh, english language you are introducing english language to, uh, to a child hmm, to a boy then first thing you need to do that you need to introduce the alphabetic orders from a b c to x y z and then you would uh, ask him to read the combination of those letters for example h and e would make he and she s and h and e would make she okay the learner learns to read the words and its combination with other words in a sentence after learning a few considerable number of um, words then you need to teach that child how to use those words to make a sentence okay then understand a full sentence read a full sentence and uh, apprehend the meaning of that sentence the learner extends the reading ability at the sentence level at this point of time this child would be able to read a sentence and comprehend the meaning of it okay after this stage the learner would go to the next level where uh, the the quantity of this uh, uh, th this this materials would increase hmm? the learner begins to comprehend the discourses uses his both linguistic and sociolinguistic knowledge for complete understanding of the text so it's not that just reading the text and understanding the meaning literal meaning but the learner also needs to connect those readings to the larger societal cultural or traditional context that is very much important contextual uh, location of uh, the apprehension of meaning of, of, of a text so this learner needs to learn how to uh, how to connect a text to the larger societal cultural political scenario otherwise the apprehension of a text would be uh, incomplete okay suppose uh, you are suppose one child is re reading animal form hmm? and someone who is doing graduation reading animal form the understanding level would be huge different there there would be huge difference between the understanding level the child would read as a sort of fable but when a graduate student would read it he may realize he or she may realize that this is actually a farce on marxism so locating a text in the societal context societal political context or historical context is very crucial otherwise the apprehension of a text would be incomplete methods of teaching reading alphabetic method syllabic method word method phrase method sentence method story method phonic method okay these are the ways you can teach one uh, one uh, child to read or even someone is trying to read uh, someone is trying to learn a new language then these methods can be applied to one candidate who is willing to learn a new language so hmm? alphabetic method in this method first you need to start with alphabets suppose i don't know anything about chinese so first in alphabetic method someone needs uh, suppose i am teaching someone to read uh, chinese then i am going to teach him or her 
Chinese alphabets first. So in alphabetic method, alphabet, alphabets are the uh, alphabets are the very uh, basic starting point of learning. Okay, learning how to read a language. Syllabic method. Uh, syllabic method syllable would uh, uh, mean uh, the I think you know the meaning of syllable syllable is the smallest part of a word that can be uttered at one uh, at one stress okay syllable so syllabic is something alphabetic method you were showing alphabets and you were just trying to uh, tell him that uh, these called a this called b this alphabet is called c this is d and it's syllabic method you are trying to just uh, uh, make him pronounce those sil those alphabets you are not showing the alphabets you are just trying to make him or her pronounce those alphabets suppose you are telling someone to uh, utter a b c d without writing those word method in this method word is the uh, learning component word is the uh, first step of learning a new language hmm? so someone if someone is trying to read uh, uh, if someone is trying to learn a new language then first according to this method you teach him words okay you teach him words phrase methods first let him learn phrases similarly sentence method first make this candidate learn a few sentences gradually he or she would start apprehending the meaning and the uh, and the components of a sentence that is uh, the words story method tell him or her stories and gradually this candidate or basically this is applicable to child this child would start apprehending the meaning phonic method just make him learn the phonemes that make him learn the phonemes uh, that make him learn how to pronounce certain uh, certain you know uh, certain um, you see certain words phonemes if phonemes are no phonic method is not actually very useful you are uh, making some making a child uh, learn how to pronounce particular sounds hmm? sounds which are components of a word okay or syllable now according to several uh, several critics and and several experts imbibing any one single method would not be useful so what you need to do you need to combine all of this and apply all of these methods to make someone learn a new language it is something very obvious uh, if you see uh, a child uh, if you see a mother is uh, teaching her child uh, how to uh, how to just uh, speak then she would start with see it's not that she would only start with alphabetic method or syllabic method or word method she would tell him stories he would state he would he would ask him to read alphabets he would tell him to uh, say certain words like mother father whatever and once again she would try to tell her she would try to make her child utter a full sentence so while you were teaching a child basically specifically child then you need to imbibe all of these methods in this way uh, the learning process can be much more useful and swift poor reading what is poor reading Burke says that the following are the causes of the poor reading habits okay lack of effective techniques when you are not reading appropriately suppose you are reading very swiftly but you are not just uh, you know you, you are not just uh, comprehending the meaning suppose you are reading rapidly with wrong pronunciations okay 
so this is some these belongs to the technical aspects of one language uh, or reading so poor the fir very first uh, uh, cause of poor reading is lack of effective technique then lack of effective practice if you don't practice then you won't be able to read uh, very quickly or appropriately not a direct interaction between the word symbol and the comprehension okay suppose you're reading but not comprehending the meaning insufficient background knowledge if you don't have a uh, sufficient background knowledge then the uh, reading would not be effective suppose you are reading about uh, uh, suppose you are reading about himalayas okay and you don't know uh, what how to differentiate a plateau and a mountain then how the reading of himalayas would be effective suppose i am a student of english literature then suddenly i am going to i i, I am just reading a um, a, a mathematical uh, equation or or a, a complex mathematical research paper then my reading would not be uh, effective because i don't have that uh, cap capability or that background knowledge to apprehend this research paper this scientific research paper uh, accurately understanding what takes needs a slow reading or swift reading i gave you an example okay suppose you are reading a very complex text where the meanings are very dense then you are just reading very rapidly without apprehending the meaning then it would not be useful visual problems now this is very crucial i have told you that reading is a visual process you are seeing the symbols and language and then you are seeing the printed uh, lines printed words or written words or lines then you are reading it so you if you have visual problems then reading can be not effective sounds of letters and pronunciations now bad pronunciation is a reason behind a poor reading reading comprehension now reading i have always said that reading is reading with comprehension reading means reading with comprehension reading does not necessarily mean that you know how to pronounce that word uh, and the meaning of what that word literal meaning of that word and you are just reading without uh, associating this text with the appropriate societal political or cultural context or trying to understand the information or ideas that this text is trying to afford then it's it's a, it, it is a poor reading reading means reading with comprehension reading with understanding so re, uh, reading with comprehension so what are the factors that depends that that varies uh, in case of uh, reading with comprehension linguistic competence motivation schooling and accumulated reading ability these are the internal factors that you need to have you need to have a strong linguistic competence you need to have motive behind reading okay you need to have basic ideas and basic background knowledge prior uh, reading a text external factors the printed page suppose you are reading at uh, a, an old book where you can barely read whatever is written on that uh, whatever is uh, printed on that page then it is not something uh, uh, that can be said as your fault because you are reading a text uh, reading a book where the printed page is not very good and you cannot uh, actually read whatever is printed over there then it is an external factor obvious factor obviously qualities of the reading environment now this is very crucial you see suppose you were reading you are trying to read and someone is constantly talking beside you then uh, then you cannot be able to read appropriately okay noise is a disturbing factor is a, is a is a uh, is a crucial disturbing factor okay so qualities on the reading environment text readability and text organization how the text the quality of text also depends how the text have been how the text has been uh, written how the text has been uh, you know affording the meaning how the text is portraying the meaning 
whether the text is written very uh, easy language easy way or a very dense way that depends teacher activity this is also a part of external factor sometimes you cannot apprehend the meaning on your own so you need a sort of stimuli from outside so that's why teacher would do that part teacher would help you to understand a text that you are trying to read okay these are the references